Hello everyone and welcome to uh, this installment of the White Dove Ministries video blog. I hope these blogs are a blessing to you. I just try to share little truths that we're sitting on right now and things that we're contending for. And here we are at the beginning of 2013 and uh, no doubt uh, a very interesting year ahead of us. I believe it's going to be a year of dichotomies, uh, sweet and sour, light and darkness. Uh, great contrasts are going to be occurring in 2013. And separation will be a buzzword, especially in, in the church uh, during this year and the years to follow. And these little blogs that we do uh, are not necessarily time sensitive. We, we believe that there are truths that will pertain to what we do from now until the end of the age. Uh, there are certain things that have been set in motion, uh, prophetic implications of events that are happening in the world that's, that clearly identify where we are in Scripture. We know that with the the great controversies and the, um, the tension that's building around Jerusalem, that, uh, that something is about to burst, something is about to take place on the earth uh, of a stupendous nature. And, uh, of course, you know, Jerusalem is our timetable. One of my favorite scriptures is Zechariah 12, 8, when it says that um, when you see Jerusalem becoming a stumbling stone to the nations of the earth, uh, a cup of reeling to the nations, then know that God is recruiting an army the least of which will be like David, the least of which will have the valor and the courage uh, of David, and the house of David will be like God. And I believe that means that the bride of Christ will be so close to the Lord that when she speaks, it will be as though he has spoken. The house of David will be like God. So we're, uh, we're contending for that. We're believing for these great and stupendous promises. And uh, no matter how weary we are in battle and no matter... Uh, how difficult and lofty these things seem, I believe grace is coming, uh, great grace. You know, the capstone comes, it says in Zechariah 4, uh, with great grace, grace, grace. And uh, that means multiplied levels of grace. And I, I'm believing for that. And that's our hope. Uh, we, we know now that uh, we're not going to accomplish this in our strength. Uh, it's going to have to be the Lord. He's going to have to do it, and he's going to. He will have his harvest, and he will have a bride that is spotless and pure, and he will have sons of the kingdom that move in power and authority. It's going to happen, and uh, I want to be a part of it, and I hope you do too. But uh, we just came off the new year and got several revelations. I'll share a couple of them. Uh, one of them uh, is a revelation that I'd actually had back in 2008. Most of you remember perhaps the, the vision I had one night. I couldn't sleep and went to bed. Uh, very late, and the moment my head hit the pillow, I went into a vision. Uh, I actually left my body, went into a certain place, and and I saw what I called a manhole over the uh, the bowels of the earth, and the manhole was open, and all this black billowing stuff came pouring out, and I saw the images of Hitler and Stalin uh, coming out, and and I watched demonic hordes coming out of the bowels of the earth, uh, meeting with people, uh, teaching them how to walk in realms of darkness. It was a very hideous, horrible thing. And just when I thought I could bear it no more, a voice came booming out of heaven and said, and the sons of light must respond in like fashion. And I watched as a door opened in heaven and angels began to pour out of heaven. And I was told these angels had been standing in the presence of God for eons of time, waiting for this hour to come to the earth. I was so encouraged by that. And uh, I believe what I saw eventually happened two years later with the oil crisis, when I saw CNN and Fox and these images of the oil coming out of the bowels of the earth, it was the exact image that I had seen. So I think for me, it had dual purposes. Uh, there was the oil crisis. There was that natural occurrence uh, that was certainly tragic, but I believe it marked a timing too, where everything went to another level. And so I want to, I want to emphasize one point. You know, I prophesied that for many, uh, many years, 2008 and following, but I was just with a, a very uh, wonderful gentleman, a man by the name of Kamal Saleem. And uh, I really enjoyed meeting this man of God. And uh, was a former terrorist and has an incredible testimony, but just a rich individual. And it was just a pleasure to meet him. But he said right before this new year, as he was um, just contending with the Lord for a revelation for this year, he had a, a visionary encounter of some nature. And he heard the Lord say in this encounter that angels... That, uh, that have never been on the earth before are being dispatched and released into the earth. Well, that was certainly an encouragement to me 
because I've been prophesying that, and he's the first person I've ever heard share a similar revelation. So I, it made me think that we're in this thing. We're, uh, there's help coming from heaven. And so I want to encur- encourage you with that. Um, no matter how discouraging things may be, I know we watch the news and things politically are, are certainly not good, uh, politically, economically, and every other way. And I, I know that. But you know what? Our, our citizenship is in heaven. We're part of another kingdom. And that kingdom is not going to be shaken. And we need to be reminded of that. We need to be reminded that help is on the way, that angelic hosts are being sent. The Lord himself is the captain of the hosts, the Lord of the hosts. And so that means they're under his jurisdiction. They're under his direction. And I want him to direct a few of them my way and the way of our ministry. And I pray that he does the same thing for you, Uh, things that will deliver us and bring revelation and bring insight. You know, Daniel was praying at the ninth hour uh, of the day, and the Lord sent Gabriel and gave him incredible encouragement, told him he was a man highly esteemed. I tell you what, the whole visitation was worth that. Can you imagine being told by, by Gabriel, no less, that you're a man highly esteemed? Wow, what a blessing. But then he went on to tell him, of course, Daniel's 70th week. And I believe things of that nature are on the way. I do. I believe that's happening. I believe the Lord has given me that promise. Uh, I've been prophesying for a few uh, months now that uh, someone is about to go behind the veil. Uh, You know, I shared last month in the video blog that the model for what's coming is not going to be found in the past. It's going to be found in the future. We're going to reach over into the millennial realm and pull something back into our day. And and it's going to begin to shape uh, what we will do, and it'll be unlike things we have done in the past. I believe that. But, uh, but I believe angelic hosts are coming to, to bring all manner of insight. Uh, revelation of the scriptures are coming our way. Uh, we're going to know the secrets of the kingdom and, and the mysteries of God. And overcomers are going to begin to eat of the hidden manna. And they're going to receive a, a white stone with a new name written upon it, which no man knows save him that receives it. And uh, one other word, I just uh, in a very short, uh, brief explanation was that the Lord said, I'm sending messengers. Uh, I know we're ministers. We're ministers of the kingdom, ministers of the gospel, ministers of healing, ministers of righteousness. We are ministers. But the Lord is emphasizing another aspect of our calling right now, and it is messengers. We are to be messengers of the kingdom. That means we will have a message. And it will not be unlike Jeremiah, who had an encounter with the word of God. That means the Lord. And the Lord stretched forth his hand and touched the mouth of Jeremiah and filled his mouth with a word. And that word was powerful. That word was sharp. It was active. It was dividing spirit from soul, if you will. And that word, Jeremiah was told, would uproot and tear down and destroy, but also plan and build. So I believe that was an apostolic-like commissioning that Jeremiah had. And I believe these messengers of our day, messengers of the 21st century, are going to have Jeremiah-like encounters where the Lord is going to put a word in your mouth. And that word is going to begin to uproot some things. It'll uproot some strongholds that have kept uh, maybe your family in bondage or even entire congregations in captivity uh, or whatever the case may be. Maybe even some people have authority over regions to dethrone uh, realms of darkness that have kept the whole region uh, in, in, in some form of, of bondage. Uh, that, that will be uprooted. But as soon as that is uprooted, we have to have an equal amount of determination uh, and authority to build a kingdom in its place. Without that, what returns will be seven times worse. And these apostolic leaders that are being raised up today, even beyond what we have known so far, extensively beyond what we have known so far, comparable to those of the first century, are about to have some serious authority. They're going to have a word in their mouth. I love the image of the Lord Jesus, you know, over in the book of Revelation. If I can read it to you, it says this. In his right hand he held the seven stars, and out of his mouth came a sharp two-edged sword. And his face was like the sun shining in its strength. These seven stars, what are they? He said they're the seven angels of the seven churches. The word angels, angelos, simply means messengers. Uh, A messenger can be a celestial being or can be a natural man. And we know that these were natural men because John was told to write letters and send them to them. So these were not uh, angelic hosts. They were men on the earth that functioned in their specific age as a messenger to that age. I think it would be fair to say 
that Martin Luther was the messenger to that church age, and John Wesley was the messenger to, uh, to, the, to the Philadelphian age, and there were messengers, William Branham and others, to this last age. And I want to be a messenger, and I want you to be a messenger of the kingdom and a, and a, a message being put in our mouth. But it says these stars are in his hand. The messengers of God are in the hand of God. <laughs> wow. What better place would there be to be? Let me just read one more scripture to you before we close. It comes from Jeremiah 15, 19 through 21. It says, uh, thus says the Lord, if you will return, then I will restore you. Before me you will stand, and if you extract the precious from the worthless, you will become my spokesman. Listen to this. They, for their part, may turn to you, but as for you, you must not turn to them. For I will make you to this people as a fortified wall of bronze. And though they might fight against you, they will not prevail over you. For I am with you to save you and deliver you, says the Lord. So I have a lot of confidence that these messengers are going to be covered. They may be opposed. There may be some religious spirits that are not happy with the message that's going to be coming forth. But you know what? We need to begin to separate the precious from the worthless, the clean from the unclean, like the Zadok priesthood in Ezekiel 44. And I believe that's where we're headed. So let me pray for you. Lord, I just pray that you will raise these messengers up, that there'll be men and women that, in the palm of your hand, that you cover them and bless them and put a word in their mouths and let them stand without fear to prophesy the revelation of Jesus Christ and establish your kingdom, Lord, and bring you glory, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen and amen.